Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the first episode of Let's Figure This F Thing Out, where I attempt to use software I know nothing about. But with any luck, I can figure something out and hopefully be able to explain it to you. Like some of you, I didn't grow up with a lot of the modern technology we use now, but that doesn't mean I don't want to use some of it. However, I know nothing about uh, coding or game design, graphic design, nothing of the sort. I could never create anything like you see here on this screen. But that's what this particular piece of software is there to help you with. This is what they call a virtual tabletop or VTT. And as the title suggests, it creates a three-dimensional terrain that allows you to play, in this particular instance, role-playing games in a virtual environment that gives you a little more in-depth immersion, if you will. And there's a lot of really insane, crazy features that these programs have. The one I am looking into in particular is called the RP Engine. It doesn't seem like it gets as much attention as some of the other titles, which you may have come across if you've ever looked for this kind of software before, but it caught my eye and uh, I started playing with it a little and in that time I found two things. One, the potential of this software and this particular title alone because this is honestly the only one I've ever used. It's the only one I've ever really looked into to be honest. The others I've scratched the surface but one is that the potential is there to do quite a bit with it. A lot of different things if you're a creative individual if you're a content creator, if you're a gamer, especially if you're into your TTRPGs, your tabletop role-playing games, and two, these things can look ridiculously complex and overwhelming if you have no idea what you're looking at. And me? I had no idea what I was looking at. But in just a short time, I was able to figure out, to me, what I felt was like a very healthy chunk of information that really would have helped me out a bit when I first downloaded this. So I'm going to show you some of that. If you're already familiar with the basics of this program or if you're familiar with these programs in general, this first episode may not be that helpful. But if you're brand new to this, if you really want to dive into this and start playing with it, you really want to see what can be done with it, it can be very frustrating when you first start it up as there's so much going on, there's so much to interact with. It can be very confusing. But hopefully, with what I've figured out here, I can get you started with playing around, enjoying the basics, and really getting a feel for it. And here we are at the main screen. You see a lot of craziness going on in the background here. Just some potential of what can be done with this particular title. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select Game Master because that's how you're going to get to your maps. Now here, pretty simple basic layout. I have one and two that I've been playing with. Let's go ahead and start a new one here. And we'll just name this... Right, load on in, and here we have our starting map. Now, you'll notice it's already populated with assets. I do not know how to change that. I do not know if it can be changed at the moment. This is simply how every new map loads in, already laid out with assets to start. On top of that, I don't know if there is a way to increase the size of the board or map itself but I have figured out some nifty tricks that we'll get into a little bit later. We'll start up here in the top left. We're at what I call the play screen, because as you see, we have a little green play button, and this is also the screen that you'll use when playing actual games. Uh, movement is fairly easy. All of this I am achieving by holding down a right click on the mouse and simply moving around. On top of that, we can also go forward, backwards, left and right and then there is also zooming as well all of this can be used to 
help navigate as you're trying to work on the terrain. Now, let's go through this window real quick. Here we have the social menu. The social menu has your basics, turn order sheet, player list, the chat window, which this is really cool because this is where you find your dice. So let's just go ahead and say we need to roll a single 20. And look at that. Comes out, even gives us the number. Let's say we want to roll four of them. Shoot, look at that, falling off the board. And let's say we want to roll 20 d20s and 5 d6s and a couple of d10s. And there y'all go. Now how exactly you'd read that, I'm not too sure, but it does actually give you somewhat of a readout. It's a little strange, but real nifty. And then at the top here, we have ping. This is used to ping places on the map, as it says. But what's really cool is that it gives you these nifty, really nifty markers so that it's unique in how it pings. Boom. That's just great. All right. Now, below the social menu, we have the document menu. This is actually a pretty decent one to work with. It has a built-in browser so you can look up documents that you need online it's also got a PDF viewer very helpful and now this one is most interesting the document manager the document manager actually leads to the player character sheets now this is a system that I still need to go through and put together but from what I have seen it is it is quite capable of it is quite capable of accommodating a lot of different games and a lot of different variations. We'll definitely have to get into that in a later video. Now below that we have our map controller which I really haven't gotten into so I can't explain too much about it but at some point down the line we'll get into that. And then the final box we have the audio controller. Now this one is really nifty because if you notice here after we open it we have a list, a ridiculous list. These are all soundtracks and sound effects and ambient sounds to add to your map. So when you are playing whatever game it is you're playing, you have quite the library to choose from and you can stack them together in multiples, have them play in whatever order you want. That's actually a really cool feature. Oh, it has multiple categories. Look at this! Look at this! Ridiculous. Now, if we come back up here to the left, we go ahead and tap this little green play symbol. It changes to a hammer, signifying we are now in the construction screen. You can also see here it's opened up the first panel, the Prop Master. Now this one, this goes on for a while. As you see here, these are just characters, and that list just keeps expanding. We also have effects, environment, miniatures, props, tools, a whole plethora of things. And these are just physical assets to add into your map. So for instance, let's just go over here to environment. We're gonna find our, so look, we got a giant skull, so we'll just click it. And now we have a giant skull that can be moved around, placed anywhere we want on the map. Now, how exactly do we manipulate it? We'll get to that in just a moment. So let's just go ahead and we'll left click. And there, we now have a giant skull added to the map. And this can go for anything else you find on here. I'm just under environment, but there's tools, characters, effects. There's a whole bunch of stuff. On top of that, they do have some DLC you can get that adds to it. And now this, this is one of my favorite features. This little symbol right here. We all recognize it as Steam, right? Okay, anyone who is familiar with these kinds of titles, you'll often find uh, mods, or in other words, additions you can add to your games that will alter how they work in the first place. And if you're used to how the, the workshop is on Steam, you'll know it can be a bit of a process to locate every thing that you like and add it into the game, make sure it works properly. This title, however, has already worked out a lot of the kinks. If we go ahead and click on this little Steam button, this is going to bring up the Steam Workshop for the RPG Engine. And as you see, this is all items that have been made by just fans of the game, people who play it and want to add in their own items. Now you'll see here, look, we've got 
wagon, we've got a forklift, Stargate, pump action shotgun, we've got all types of things because this particular title is not just for fantasy. You can use this for sci-fi, western, modern, anything you can really think of. This workshop is insane. You just go ahead and type in anything you're looking for. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, Halloween. Let's just see. We'll go ahead and search. Well, okay, there's just a pumpkin, but still, that's something nice. Okay, so that is how you basically throw in the props. Now let's get to manipulating them, because this was the part that took me the longest time to figure out and was the most frustrating, I think, as a brand new user to this kind of software. So we're just going to come up here to the top of the window, this little green arrow thingy. We'll click that, and we got a new panel here. All right, first one up is just your pointer, just to select things. Look, there's some grass, there's a giant skull, there's a rock. This way you can identify exactly what you're pointing on. Now the next, this is somewhat important, is the move one. This is going to bring up a new item. Go ahead and click on the skull. Let me try to transition so we can see a bit better. All right, so we have three lines and we have three squares. These indicate direction of movement. We know we're on the giant skull. This is our X, our Y, and our Z axis. Movements and patterns. So if we left click and hold on this arrow, we can slide left and slide to the right. Let go, and then we go ahead and same with this. A left click, we hold. We can slide back and forward and back and forward. And then finally, the third arrow, as you see, up and down. Now, these squares in between are combinations. As you see, I hold this square, and both these two arrows light up. So if I left click and hold, I can up and down and left and right. And jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Same with this one. I can go up and down and back and forth jiggle 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 and then the final one I can go all around and wiggle downtown so that's how we just do the basics of maneuvering it around but okay so there we found the comfortable spot for it but you know what it's not facing the right way is it so we come down here to rotation mode now this we click on it we go ahead and click on the skull it's going to bring up a slightly different looking object instead of having arrows, which indicate just straight, vertical, lateral, whatever movement. We instead have these colored rings, which indicate some type of circular movement. So let's go ahead and try to get a better view. So our green ring here indicates just your standard circular rotation. Now our red ring here Yep, that's what I thought, should rotate on that axis. It's our blue one, so we're gonna kinda go left and right. And then our outer, that should just be, yep, sort of a weird diagonal. And that's how you go ahead and position it exactly where you need. So we go ahead and rotate it a little. There, all right, so we're happy with where it is. We like where it is, we like the angle it's facing. But there's one slight problem. It's just not the right size. Now that brings us to the final one, our scaling tool. So we go ahead and click that, and click on this, and now we're back to our arrows, except they're blunted. We got little boxes. And this is gonna indicate scaling direction. So if you click and hold, and pull in one direction or the other, it's either going to increase in size or decrease. Now, I hesitate to use any of these individually, and I also hesitate to use these because they're only scaling it in one, or at best, two different axes. When you're scaling something, you technically want to move all three of these, your X, Y, and Z, at the same time. This allows you to increase or decrease the size of it without distorting it and looking weird. So if we just come down here to this little, this little light blue square, you see it lights up all three points. So we go ahead and click and hold that. And now 
we can increase and decrease the entire size of the object. And we're gonna shrink him down. We're gonna shrink him down this teeny little thing. Then I'm gonna go back up here to movement because I just want him to slide back a little bit. And there we go. Let's close the prop window. And now we have our teeny, teeny giant skull. It was a giant skull, and now it's a teeny little skull. Isn't that adorable? Okay. Click our button again, bring back up our build screen. So that is the props window and the basics of props. Now that, that took me a while to figure out. Hopefully that helps you along. Let's move to our next, which is the terrain manager. Now this one is nifty. It's much simpler, but I'd say it's important is only slightly behind the prop manager. So as you see, we have ourselves a red bubble. It's just sort of going around and a very simple window. So as you see, we have two options, our sculpt and our paint. And then we also have size and strength sliders. And then this little switch here, which is add and subtract mass. So the first ability is pretty straightforward. We have it on as sculpt. And as you see, it's currently up. We're going to add mass. So wherever this bubble is, we click and we get some mass added. Or you can hold it and it will simply keep building. Consequently, if we click it to the other side, we are now subtracting and we can go ahead and remove that, what we just put, and we can actually continue to remove down to a certain point, obviously, which is this layer here. Now, the other option is paint. So we go ahead and click that. We can pick any color. Obviously, it's a standard color slider if you've ever seen these before. I think I'm gonna go with a nice blue. Apply, and now, instead of stripping away land, it's just gonna color it. Look at that, now we have a nice little blue creek running through the backyard. We can also increase or decrease the size of area affected. So if we go ahead and jack that up, now we're really gonna paint some blue. And we can also affect the strength. So if we put that up, pow, blue, really blue. And of course, if we put this down, put the strength down a little, now you can sort of spot do areas, touch them up a little. If you're more of the artistic type, you know, do a little shading, things of that nature. And here's a nifty one. You can turn them both on at the same time. So if we have this set to subtract mass, we're sculpting and we have a blue, we can go ahead and let's increase the size. We can carve our river and paint it at the same time or any other color you prefer. But there, that's the Terrain Sculptor. Very, very handy, very nifty little tool. Right, the next one up is the Cutout Controller, which is a really, really nifty feature, and I've actually been playing with it, so we're gonna need to cut to my little slice of heaven. Well, slice of something anyway. So I have a light tower here in the back. Oh, wrong way. Boy, I tell you, it's, the controls are a little, takes, takes some getting used to, takes some getting used to. But we have a lighthouse here with an open interior. And you can go on in. Oh, oh. <laughs> As you see, the controls are rather tricky. So trying to work in there and decorate can be somewhat troublesome. So, if we come around to this side here, boy, I tell you, <laughs> my control skills are horrible. When we open back up our construction window, we come over here to the cutout controller. We're going to activate it, and you'll see I already have one in place. Boom. And that's what the cutout controller does. It opens up a section visually so that you can look inside, you can manipulate things inside. If you're trying to shoot footage or still frames, you can look inside of buildings without breaking the immersion of the objects. A really, really interesting tool. And here we are back at our first map. We still have our lovely blue trench dug. Everybody's still happy by the fire, despite the fact that they're getting flooded. 
and no one seems concerned by the difference in water color and the fact that there's no water here. No matter. So let's open back up our construction window and we'll finish with our last two. We have the atmosphere system. This is a nice little touch. As we see here, a couple of panes. We've got lighting controls. Lighting controls are just that. We can brighten it up or we can make it pretty dark. We can set the sun direction. Of course, when you've got it that dark, it doesn't matter. And you can even set the time of day. Set it all the way down. Now let's go over to weather here. And we've got some basic options. Rain and snow. So let's go ahead and turn on a little bit of rain. And we'll back it off. And the rain gets a little bit lighter. It's still raining, but it's very light. And we can go ahead and crank that right up. And really make it pound on everybody. Same with the snow. We can bring in a little bit of snow. Takes it a second to generate the particles. And then we can really make it a blizzard. Give it a second and there we go. Blinding. Pull that back. An ambient mist. Let's see here. Oh, we can really thicken that ambient mist. Look at that. It's almost like first thing in the morning. And then we can pull that back to virtually nothing. Let's give it a little, just a touch. And then down at the bottom, finally, we have sky boxes, which are, well, here. This about explains it. So here, these are various types of backgrounds of sky during the day. We've also got some options if you want to go with twilight hour, some more atmosphere. And then, of course, there's night but you can't you can't play right unless you got night it's probably the darkest and then there's even space <clears throat> for there are assets that allow you to oh there we go huh huh boy that's not oh oh boy that's almost uh, that's almost nauseating that's wow that's creepy <laughs> and our final category is the grid system and this is going to tie in why well, did that but this is going to tie in with our scaling mode and this is going to help address some of the questions about map size and how to change things but bear with me this is kind of unorthodox now as I had said before I have yet to figure out if there's a way to increase the overall size of the map itself, which initially would make it seem as if you are actually rather constricted. I mean, given the size of the assets currently on the map, the ones it starts with, doesn't seem like it gives you a lot of whole room to work with. And in fact, if you remember that light tower that I had, Okay, apparently we have to separate the two. No. All right, maybe if I just type in tower. There, see, we've just got towers. Let's see here, this is just a random tower. That's actually pretty small. <laughs> oh, look at that, that's pretty small. Why are they so small? I'm confused. Because now look, that's that's a water tower. That should not be that size. Clearly, I did something earlier that I just don't remember. What is this? Oh, right. This slider is the size of these. So in case you are a little uh, nearsighted, farsighted, whatever it may be, I know I have vision issues myself. Oh, you know what I think it is? I think it kept the scaling from our friend the skull. I think it went ahead and saved that scaling information for us. Let's see here, scale is 0 0.11. No, no, your scales are not. Hmm, interesting, now let's see here. What if I, I spawn you and we check you? No, you're at one. Very strange. Anyhow. 
as I was saying, since there is no way that I can tell to elongate the map or make it a bigger size, this is what I've been using as a workaround. Now I'm sure there's a better, faster, easier way to do it, but being the novice idiot that I am, listen, work with me, all right? <laughs> In the future, anything I uncover, I will include in future videos, but for the time being, this is my trick. So, we go up here to our grid settings, the final panel. Now, I haven't worked with all of this yet, but here we've got our grid types, which is actually pretty helpful. Because if you're in different types of games, look at that, you've got hex style, horizontal lines, vertical lines, then we'll go back to square. But what I like to do here is mm, grid size is one. So that's one square. We can alter this down much lower. So if we go say, oh, that's, that's not what I wanted, point 25. Now look at the patterning. Look how tight and small those are. Go ahead and close that out. So at this point, if we start taking things and shrinking them, we can get them down to fit. Oh, that's the wrong one. We wanted move. We can get them to fit in these teeny tiny little squares. Now, no, it is not an optimal fix whatsoever. Oh, went under the mesh. See there? Whoa! See, there's our skull. It's kind of lost some of its detail and whatnot, but again, it was a giant skull, not a teeny tiny skull. Go ahead and zoom back out. But as you see, if you go ahead and scale all of your objects down, you can barely even see the skull, and you make your mesh much smaller, you're essentially doing a miniaturization. You are simply shrinking things down, scaling them down, Anybody who's ever worked with models would understand things of that nature, a, a 1 25th scale or, or, you know, something of that nature. I'm not too certain about the math, because I'm not very good at math. But that is how I've been working around with that particular issue. And that about covers everything I've picked up so far that I really wish I knew going in. I've had a very difficult time trying to find any actual tutorials for this software, which is a shame. I think it's, uh, I think it's got, as I've said, quite a lot of potential to it. So hopefully you found uh, some helpful information out of this one. And if not, hey, hopefully you'll find it in the next one. Or listen, if you know something I don't, or if I've said something that's inaccurate, or you know a better way, please, by all means, comment. And I will, uh, I will add an update in the next video. So until then, you all take it easy, and I'll see you then.